Zetus Lapidus, Justin. <laughs> Zetus Lapidus. I want to learn how to use major a lot. I want to use uh, so we watched rewatch Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. My goodness, this movie takes place. If you don't know, this is a spin-off of Blade Runner 2049 prequel. <laughs> Um, it's Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. It's uh, a <laughs> uh, D- Disney Channel original movie from 1999 that takes place in the year 2049. Uh, it's it's very good. I, I enjoyed it so much. Right from I the beginning, too, yeah. it said 19, uh, 2049. I'm like, oh my God. Ridley no, Scott love- directed this? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even connect that. That's hysterical. Yeah. I, did, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Dude, no, I have so many... I loved this movie. Like, like I, it's not a good movie in any way, in any way, shape or form, but it's just, it, it's, it's so entertaining. And every single it's moment. It's so good. I, I disagree yeah. with you. We have uh, little Raven Simone, mm-hmm. which is just absolutely adorable. Like there's something about little Raven Simone that you just like want to just like, just, 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 just hug her. Just be like, Oh my God, you're just, you're just adorable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but her hair, like the hairstyles, the costumes, just the way that they that they do space in general. It makes 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 me excited. It makes me excited. It's the future I want. It really is because honestly, a really a really interesting choices that they made with the future on Earth. Which guess what? Nothing's changed. It's 1999 and on Earth, 2049 yeah. in space. Clear. That's honestly. When me and my friend we were watching it, that's what we were thinking. We were like, "Did is it is it like a different year in space?" <laughs> and then it's 1999 and on Earth because everyone's wearing, everyone's 90s up down there. Mm-hmm. And it's like I and I actually I it's obvious because like they spent all the budget on the the, the aerial shots for uh, for the space station and and all the space stuff. And then once they got to Earth, they were just like, "Um, uh, uh, let's just throw a laptop in there." Uh, you know. I liked how they didn't highlight advanced technology it's just yeah. kind of the, uh, uh, like that architecture was really really quirky i well, gr- when i was watching i was like oh because i didn't remember this movie at all when i was watching yeah it. same and then I, I like saw the windows and i was like i distinctly remember those like oval windows i remember that i was like those are interesting those are weird shades the only thing i remembered from xenon the only mm-hmm. thing i remember was the the lead singer the the dude with the spiked hair but uh, I, I growing up I thought that was like Ricky Martin or a real pop star. I don't I because I remember too. it was always in the background, and then I watched it, and then when he like came on screen, I'm like, isn't he like a really famous pop star at the time? And they're like, no, they just put him in this one movie, and I was like, what? Are you you mean he didn't have like albums and stuff, and he wasn't like a real perform? And I was, it blew my mind. Like I literally thought it was like Ricky Martin or someone like that, like a famous singer. I did too. You know? I thought it was a. Uh, I thought it was Billy Joel for some reason. This Green is, Day. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Maybe it's because of the hair. We we were manipulated by the hair. And it's like, his singing. It sounded. I was like, "That's Ricky Martin." Oh, I thought that. Like, that's the one person who I thought it was. This whole like all, most of this time. <laughs> I just love at the end, like the entire movie. It's built up that this guy, the, the 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 lead singer, is like the best musician of all time. And then we get to the musical performance, and it is the lamest. <laughs> it's a, I mean, hey, everyone's digging it. That 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 all that music still resonates with so many people. Zoom zoom. Oh yeah. That gets stuck in your head. It's crazy. Oh fuck yeah! It's so wild. But like when they first announced, like uh, announced the concert in the on the on the ship, they're like not virtually in person. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be the future. They're gonna be announcing concerts like this. We're like, it's not virtual anymore. And I was like, this is this is resonating hard with uh, quarantine <laughs> because they're yeah. virtual there in, in the future. They're like have the virtual teachers virtual like it really does it's virtual because they're in space that's why it's all virtual and everything's happening on earth i think so but it's like it, all that virtual stuff in the future was like oh wow it, this this is a uh, unnervingly getting accurate but it's, we still have a good what 20 years oh wow elijah are you ready for some ready for some tea buddy what uh, so xenon girl the 21st century the movie was a failed pilot for a proposed television series so that means that this is supposed to be a pilot or an entire series and it failed. So they were like, fuck it. We're going to jam pack all these episodes on top of each other. They edited it into, wow. That makes a lot of sense though, kind of, because uh, the parts like 
when when it goes to like space to earth Mm-hmm. the tone change is like like everything changes like mm-hmm. it's like it, it feels like two completely different movies mm-hmm. it's such a it's such a nostalgia trip and a half like mm-hmm. the entire time i was watching it i was like oh that's where i would say that do you know what zetus lapidus means i think it just means oh fuck holy shit well um, yes <laughs> but the way they got it is uh uh what's it called zetus is apparently like a huge constellation and uh i think lapidus is like one of saturn's moons Oh, so interesting. Like space terms put together, two space terms put together. So it's like, yeah, it's like a swear word. So that means the writer just, just read one, like they like they read like half of a science textbook and they're like, you know what, fuck it, Zetus, yeah, they Zetus. There. Yeah, um, mesh them. <laughs> exactly. I love how she says major on everything. Like she'd be like, depression, major, depression, <laughs> my, minor. I would be so, like, I was trying to like think that way where I could, form a sentence like that and it's really hard <laughs> yeah like, no, no, the, no, dude, to I, figure out the context of the act i wish i took english in in 2049 because that sounds fun <laughs> you know what i said uh, i i put i don't have my notes with me but i just remembered uh i was like this feels like the world uh that bill and ted live in yeah that eventually like, will grow into yeah because especially like uh, the way that they uh the way that they talk to each other and like mm-hmm. the, like how rock music is is handled and everything it's like yeah. This is Bill and Ted's oh, fucking future. That protozoa doll is so scary looking. It stands out. It's like super long and cheap looking. I was like, that looks like a voodoo doll. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like she made it herself. But dude, oh. let's talk about the 1999 effects too. Like the, them doing those aerial oh, yeah. shots of the space I was station. Blown away. I was like, am I watching Gravity right now? <laughs> Where's Sandy B? No, dude, you're watching Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> <laughs> That's the the prequel before. <laughs> Did you know that the director of this movie made Steel with Shaq? <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff, but that was what stood out to me. And the writer has made a lot of stuff like uh, Land Before Time, Smart House. What Did you know LeVar Burton directed Smart House from Rainbow? Yes, Rainbow? I did. Yeah, no, that's I the next one. I feel, like, yeah, I feel like that's the next one we should definitely do. Yeah, and, LeVar Burton, Reading I, Rainbow. I want to do this next one at, uh, at some point because the writer of um, Xenon also wrote Phantom of the Megaplex and Cowbells, which was his last like decom movie. Oh, Cowbells! <laughs> that was the I later when, ones. That was when I was starting to drift away from Disney. Yeah, I remember Cowbells uh, being uh, uh, released after the world premiere of, of Hannah Montana. <laughs> Trying also to get that cousin. country, those country uh, viewers. Oh yeah. Phantom of the Megaplex, though, is one of my favorite films, and he still is. Like, there's this whole dot. There's this uh, Mickey Ro- I think it's Mickey Rooney, right? He's in yep. it. He has this monologue in it that's one of my favorite monologues of all time. Do you recognize the guy from Xenon, the Gregory, Gre- the guy who plays Greg, Gregory Smith? What else do you recognize him from? I, rec- I like him from Small Soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> he's Dude, he is so creepy in this. But he's only that he shot Small Soldiers a year before, and then he made this one. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought he looked older in Small Soldiers. Yeah, Small Soldiers came out a year before Xenon. Interesting. They um, probably shot yeah. him around the same time, though. Maybe his his fate. Like he would like look at Xenon and like just be like. The director was really visual. Like even with the older villain antagonist, I was creeped out because they would linger on the shots of him like walking past her and winking, and it's all in slow motion. I'm like, this is an old man winking at this girl, and they're really yeah. really soaking it in, and I hated it. <laughs> and I hate it. the directing though was pretty good because I was like I I get it this guy's bad and then yeah. the other guy I was like, with Greg I'm like oh I get it he's interested because <laughs> you had to you had to really hold on those moments for kids I guess oh, yeah. but like yeah there's a lot of a lot Dude, directing into uh, uh Stuart Pankin too who was also in Honey Honey We Shrunk Our Shelves Our Shelves Ourselves yeah I wrote his name down and I was like this guy because I know him from Arachnophobia too. Yeah, arachnophobia. Yeah, he's in a lot of shit. I just recognize that face and his tones. Oh, I just I love how um <laughs> uh Raven Simone's name in this is Nebula Wade. Dude, at the end of the movie, uh when the credits started rolling, it has suggestions. It was Xenon the sequel, and it shows Nebula Wade. And I'm like, that's so not Raven. Yeah. They recast her. <laughs> they recast her. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I'm upset. But then I looked it up. Spoilers. Raven Simone comes back for the third one. Oh, she does. Huh? Why? As the same character, Nebula Wade. Why? Oh, wow. That's a fuckaroo. That's a fuckaroo. But- was Xenon 2 successful enough to make Raven be like, ah, I should have done that. 
I'm pretty sure that Raven was doing, but why by the time the sequel, like she was doing her own shit, like the TV show, That's So Raven and Cheetah Girls. Like, yeah, she Kirsten was, like, Storms actually ended up being a guest star in That's So Raven later on. Yeah, I know Kirsten's, dude, honestly, like she really holds the movie. Like, like she, she, you can tell she's like laughing a lot in shots where there's, she's, she's having a great time. Oh my God. Like, she's she is, still acting, dude. She's on, she's been on General Hospital from 2005 yeah. to now. She's still in General Hospital, which is cool. <laughs> I also found out she was Bonnie from Kim Possible. Yeah, really yeah, no, she she's been uh, she's been around. She's yeah, been around she's for a while. More of my childhood than I thought. I, that's and she's and she looks good too. Like she doesn't look like she you knows she's. Yeah, I just watched this reunion thing with Gregory Smith and Kirsten Storms and the guy who played Protozoa. People Magazine did like a reunion interview with them, and it was so funny. Uh, Gregory Smith looks pretty different. Well, he looks kind of a. I would I, I wouldn't say he's a teen heartthrob anymore. <laughs> 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 but i would like to see him in more stuff because he was cool because i'm watching this other show everwood which just got put on hbo is chris pratt's first show he's the, like the main son in it gregory Smith. oh interesting yeah the oh yeah i i thought xenon was like this is a perfect way to start this uh like decom revisited thing because yes. there are so many good good decoms but there's like there's only some that will like they'll really like still hit me like as if i'm still a kid and i'm mm. watching it as a kid and Xenon, like when I was, the entire time I was watching, I was like, I remember being in my room in Vegas next to my brother, mm-hmm. having these two shitty twin beds, small ass little box TV, mm-hmm. big ass remote that's bigger than our faces. Yeah. And uh, turning it down, like, you know, like making sure our mom isn't, isn't awake. Cause the, it was one of those movies that would like be on at like 3 a.m. Like, remember yeah. those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. those random ass. Uh, I, I knew about this movies. movie because I grew up with three older sisters, so they they all would watch it all the time. That's why I heard the song so much. That's yeah, why I thought it was like a real artist because they would play that song, sing it. So, uh, how would how how would you rate Xenon Girl the twenty first century? Uh, I'll give it t- uh, two different ratings. I'll give it the nostalgia rating, and then I'll give it the rating of an adult. <laughs> my, I, like that. Now. I like that. For my adults. It's kind of hard to differentiate them with this one specifically for nostalgia and adult, but uh, adult, I'll give it a maybe a 3.8 out of five. Cause it's, it's, it's one I would show my kids if, mm-hmm. when I have kids. That's it's cause it's goofy and it'll be closer to that year. It's kind of like a looking at it like back to the future type way and nostalgia value. I would probably give it like a, probably a 4.6 or something or 4.7 because it's just like the era is still definitely seen even though it's the future but it's like it's so distinct of 90 like late 90s mm-hmm. it's like you feel those like they have the dial pads are all super analog like everything's just <laughs> not advanced at all and you see that that and i that's probably what i would <laughs> say it's 4.6 for nostalgia yeah uh, my nostalgia rating would be four out of five mm-hmm. like for everything you just said just because it's just and it's just one of those movies that when i was watching it, i was just i was like really transported right back into my childhood bedroom mm-hmm. and but my adult rating though i would have mm-hmm. to give it two out of five like it's not it's not a good movie but the bad it's, guys his 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 what he wants to do is evil he wants to crash a whole whole space station for insurance yeah, he wants to kill millions and millions of people for insurance. <laughs> that's wild. That's that's why I'm like, that's actually super dark. <laughs> it is. It is. But I wish that there was a scene where um where he went like full on, like you know, like that's pretty evil. But I thought there was gonna be a scene where he like full on like like tries to like kill little like little xenon mm-hmm. yeah like, some like, scene where they have a standoff <laughs> yeah the but there isn't really a standoff it's just kind of she just goes into space she stops it and then the band shows up and then it's over <laughs> yeah i love how they worked in with the gravity and stuff and her dealing with gravity i like that element a lot i like that too yeah like the no, pool that was, that she's, was... she almost drowns because she's like i can swim in space but that's way different obviously and everything about the space stuff they had like yeah we only yeah. eat clean food like it would have been a good pilot of like this girl she's basically an alien coming to earth but We'll, I don't know what the sequels are. I haven't seen them. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 we should definitely revisit those soon. 